All right, so this is my uh, USB rack, and uh, I know, I know, I know. It's uh, totally unnecessary. So I'm going for fun on this one. I, ha I always kept a little tray of USBs, and I, from time to time, use them, and I sometimes forget to put them in the tray. I can't find the one I want. I remember something's on a particular one, and so I wanted to make a rack. I looked on the internet, and there's lots of, like, indexed little slotted trays but um i knew i wanted to make it modular so i didn't have more slots than i needed and i always had the ability to make enough slots but i also had this fun idea to make it like you pop them out so you can grab it um it's just really to put your usbs up on a pedestal each one of these sections is independent so you can bring them all forward if you want send them back bring one snap together as many of them as you want uh, I've got seven here right now. I'm going to build a single one and show you how that all goes together. Um, so yeah, not for everybody, but it's fun for me. And I thought it would be a fun thing to make available. Um, it's a pretty finicky print though. So make sure you're, you're printing really, really well before you attempt this. Uh, it's really made up of two parts. There's a base and a rotating section that holds the USB. And I initially designed them with the two springs that are now separate print in place in the main part. And in the course of the making changes and the multiple iterations of design I went through, I at some point way too late decided, oh, I should make these independent so I can, I don't have to reprint the whole thing every time. So at some point I did that. And then I really liked the color contrast. So I did, this is a um, Illigoo wood color PLA. And I did the, springs in red and they make a really nice contrast so that's the reason that why they're separate and it also is probably good because if you aren't printing well you may be able to figure out which parts giving you trouble once you build this and still make it work and uh, so yeah i'm gonna just show you quickly how it goes together because it is a little tricky but once it's done it's got this uh push push mechanism built in and it works really well it's 100 percent plastic 100 percent printed all in PLA, so you don't add any springs. The springs, I've made a two-stage spring design, and they seem pretty uh, durable. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, PLA is not the best material for making springs, but this is holding up quite well. And I think part of the success of it is that every time you use this, well, first of all, I wouldn't leave it in the cocked position like that too long because you're obviously fatiguing the PLA in the spring, but so every time you use it, just send it back. But once it sits there now like that, the, the PLA seems to restore. And so you're not going to be doing this 100 times an hour. It's something you'll do from time to time. So the springs seem to work quite well for that. And uh, I'm quite happy with the way they're working. I've been using them for quite a while now. And uh, so, yeah, real quickly, I'll just show you how it goes together and what you can do with it. On the rotating part, there's one piece of support right here that you can just snap off. It should come off fairly easily. It supports this. This is the uh, push push mechanism, which most people will be familiar with, but uh, it's a little different, a little unique because it's in a radial format. Uh, normally you'll see these in a horizontal flat format. In fact, I couldn't find anybody doing it radially, but that's the great thing about 3D printers. You can do almost anything you want. And so that one you're gonna take out and uh, you do not need to lubricate it but it's way better when you lubricate it. So I'm using this um, synthetic multi-purpose -lu multi lubricant. There's a rib on the inside here where the radial spring will rub. If you just put a little bit of lubricant on there, that helps smooth that out. Under this spring, a little bit as well. I, it looks like I'm putting a lot, but I'm not. You just need a dab. And then in where the, the tab goes in the push-push mechanism again, a little bit in here will help to let that thing for find its way the first few times once it's you've run it a few times it seems to find a little track that it's happy with and you don't really need it because it's not rotating very fast but i put a little bit just in the center core so that when i push on here there's just a little bit of lubricant there so you can put that aside for a second on the base we could have actually done that last so um probably if you're doing it watch this first and then do it do that last on the base, there's one piece of support, but it breaks into three sections as you take it out. And it should come out fairly easily. And those are these three pieces. They just pulled out of there. And once that's done, there's not much else to do. Oh, there's one more thing to do. The only last piece is the, um, the radial spring. 
And that, you just need to cut off the support there. You can see this little flat piece. That just helped to stabilize this fine print here. So this spring is going to press into here. But before you put that in, it's better to put this um, arm, sprung arm in. And it's going to just snap in at the base, right Right there. And if it's not lined flat or straight, it sometimes gives you a little bit of grief just to drop in. But once it lines up, it just goes in super easily. There it goes. You'll feel a little click and it's in. And then this radial spring, as I already mentioned, sits on there and just pushes down. You don't need any tools, it just sits in there. And because we've lubricated this already now, this is the only tricky part of the build. When you put this in, it it's not gonna drop down straight away uh, all the way. The main reason is because right here, there's a tab that is going to be on the inside of the wall that's going to keep this straight. It's moving back and forth, back and forth. And also the red radial spring on the inside. If you've run it already, it won't do this the first time normally, but if you've run this already, it might not be perfectly positioned and, and it can get caught under this piece as you push it in. So just take a look and make sure it's sitting clean. And then once it's in, slide this uh, rotate it slightly and that will bring this tab back and then I can push it over the wall and then just flatten it out and it goes in and that's it and now the push push mechanism is already activated I left a little window in the back here so that you can see the push push mechanism working kind of fun to see it there's no like harm to that but it also uh, does two other things one if you forget to put lubricant in there you can put it in there now and two if you're having trouble with the push-push mechanism, as I did during the design process, you can see where it's failing. Now, I don't think that's going to happen to anybody because I think I've ironed that all out. But just so you know, you can see in there. And so that's finished. And now you could build a whole bunch of those stack, as many of them together as you want. And they all click together. And then the end piece snaps onto there as well, like that. It's a pretty firm snap on. And you can put the, the end piece like this it's the same piece printed for both ends i mean just print it twice and so now we've got a little individual usb holder there so you can see that's the idea of this thing so if you have a on your desk and you just use one usb it's kind of cool to put it up on a pedestal and you can now snap this onto more and you can build it like this you could snap another one on here and continue that way. You can take this wall off. Do it carefully because the the connectors are quite fra fragile because they're so small. But once you get something in between there, you can just pry it apart. So then you could put another one in without a wall between them. You could put walls in between every one of these so they've got a little bit more room for your finger to get on them. So you can do whatever you want. Obviously, print in any colors. I don't recommend changing the material. I mean, obviously try it if you want to, but the PLA, I kind of optimize this for PLA. I think PETG would be a better material for it, but I haven't built it in PETG. So, uh, you know, do that at your own peril. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Have fun. Enjoy.